I just want to start off this review by thanking Empire Magazine for letting me go to an advanced screening of The Nice Guys, followed by a Q&A with the writer and director Shane Black, and also the producer Joel Silver. If you're not aware of who Joel Silver is, he is like a, a legendary producer of action movies including Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, 48 Hours, Lethal Weapon, Predator, uh, The Matrix, Die Hard, and he's also the guy that was directing at the start of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I know that picture is a bit crap, but trust me, I was there. It was a genuinely interesting event where the two of them talked openly about the careers and the industry that they work in and they discuss some really interesting points like you know how they got the cast together and the fact that even though the nice guys is only just coming out Shane Black actually wrote the script for it before Kiss Kiss Bang Bang under the name of LAPI and I also want to state that this video is in no way sponsored or an advertisement for Empire magazine they're just some really sound guys and I appreciate the opportunity the Nice Guys is a buddy cop movie in the vein of the classics as opposed to the more raunchy, in your face style that seems to be the norm nowadays and it has everything you'd expect to see there and we'll get to that but first we just need to talk about how damn cool everything in this film is. It's set in 70s LA and while the 70s aren't exactly synonymous with being cool, this film is just dripping with cool, especially in the costume department. It's just bloody annoyingly effortless. Ryan Gosling's character is like constantly decked out in a sloppy suit and sunglasses and he just makes it look so easy. I, I just, I don't think I could do it. I just don't think I could pull it off. Could try though. Oh, hell yeah dude. Oh, I should totally just do the rest of the review like this. Basically, the costume... <laughs> Basically, the costume department makes Ryan Gosling look so cool that I kind of want to break my arm just to wear a cast as an accessory. Talking to Ryan Gosling, he is absolutely the highlight of this film and that's saying a lot. We may be used to his more dramatic and his restrained roles, but in this he reveals that he's actually like an extremely gifted comic actor, both with delivery and with the outright slapstick. It's not fair man, he's hilarious and good looking, like come on dude, you're only allowed one. I feel like Ryan Gosling is one of those guys where it's like perfectly accepted to have a man crush on. I mean, I am, I'm totally straight, right? But, Howard, no homo. It's probably a few of you wondering, like, is he gay? To which I can really only respond, um, hello? No, I mean, of course I'm straight. I, I totally love, uh, oh, ovaries. Russell Crowe is like a hard-hitting, no-nonsense heavy in comparison to Gosling's more off-the-wall detective. He is brilliantly cast and he's able to bring the intimidation as well as the humour. In fact, he hasn't been funnier since he tried singing in Les Mis. One of the best parts though is the actress that plays Ryan Gosling's kid. I've said it before that child actors have the ability to just completely derail a good movie, but whoever the actress is here is great and not in the slightest bit annoying. The character is really mature and arguably more mature than her dad. Matt Bomer is also in it as an ice-cold assassin. And he's fine in the role, sure, but I mean, I just couldn't stop thinking about how much he looks like a young John Hamm. No, seriously, John Hamm has somehow figured out time travel. Plot wise, it's a lot less convoluted than Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, and I know that's kind of unfair to compare the two, as it really has no relevance on this movie, but I said in my review for Kiss Kiss that it was really quite hard to follow, and The Nice Guys is definitely less complex, and it makes for a better movie. Shane Black's writing is just as witty and black and clever, but also the directing is very much in tune with the material and I mean I guess that's to kind of be expected when he's doing his own script but there's a lot more like visual comedy that like you'd expect to see in say an Edgar Wright movie. There's a pitch perfectly timed cutaway gag involving Russell Crowe's wife which had me in stitches. The story goes in places you don't expect and that keeps it really entertaining and it also keeps the audience engaged with the story. I would say that the ending is a little bit too coincidental but that is such a minor issue when the build up when the hour and a half before that is just so much fun. It's basically bubblegum film noir with an excellent script and a cast that turns out to be brilliant at playing against type. I would I would go so far as to say that it is the funniest film I've seen this year. Yeah I'd say that. It's a film that I really, really want to see succeed because we now live in a world where if it's not some tentpole franchise, the movie just gets buried. And yeah, okay, this isn't exactly, you know, an indie darling, but it's not, you know, fucking Transformers 9, Attack of the Gay Boys. And the fact that it's an original property getting a summer release means it's not going to get half the attention it deserves with all the, the other noise that's available to the average moviegoer. I can't help but thinking that this is the perfect autumn movie, and if they'd waited until, say, 
August or September, there'd be so many more people that realise just how good it is. I'm going to give the nice guys five popcorns. Honestly, I cannot recommend it enough. Thanks very much for watching my review of The Nice Guys. If you like this video or you're thinking of going to see the film, please don't forget to share this review with a friend. You may also be interested in my review of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is the film that Shane Black wrote and directed before The Nice Guys. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.